Hi everyone, uh, my name is John Bosco. So if you are joining me for the first time today, thank you for visiting I need Scrum Master. Uh, thank you for visiting my channel. So today is the second day of starting this broadcast. The first video I made was on the Monday, which was on the 2nd of January, uh, where I kind of gave a highlights about introduction about what this channel is going to be about, content, who I am, what I do, how I could support you in your career or your aspiration to become a Scrum Master or to know things about Scrum. So today is a kind of a moving forward, you know, from that last um, broadcast that I made. Um, so today I will be talking about the mechanics of Scrum, the Agile Foundation. I will try as much as I can to keep this 10 box. Like I said, uh, it's between 15 minutes to 30 minutes. Any time that I am discussing any issue that is going to be taking more than 30 minutes, I will be able to shorten that and then make it in such a way that um, it becomes either part one, part two, part three, section one, section two, section three, Go going forward. I'll try as much as I can to take us from the ground level to the advanced level about Scrum as an Agile framework, and then Agile as a project management methodology. Okay, so with that said, let's get started. All righty. Um, so like I said, we'll be talking about the mechanics of Scrum. What do I mean by mechanics? By mechanics, I mean the foundational structure of Scrum. We understand that Scrum is an agile, one of the agile frameworks. So we'll be coming back to that. But before we go into Scrum, which is um, a topic that we'll be discussing further or in another of our broadcasts, I wanted to also look at the foundation of Scrum, which is um, project management. And then there are two basic, there are basically two um, approaches to project management development or project management um, methodologies. And then, so I have slide and then I'll be discussing and then, uh, you know, you can also follow looking at the slides. The reason why I had this slide so that um, we can capture really the essence of the discussion. So there are basically two approaches to project management. You have the traditional way, which is called the waterfall, and then you have the agile methodology. So these are the two predominant way of building softwares or working on projects. Again, so let's take it from the first one, which is the traditional way. Uh, the traditional way is kind of a plan driven. What that means is, is a step by step approach. What that means is everything has been mapped out. What that means is it is controlled. It is predictable. So um, traditional way of building projects or building software ways is kind of slow. It's waste of resource. These are the attributes of um, waterfall. So waterfall is an is a project management methodology that's you know kind of control and you know plan driven, which is in contrast to another methodology called agile. So agile is more or less flexible, while um, waterfall is more or less um, very rigid. And then as much as waterfall is kind of sequential, agile is iterative. What iterative means it is in cyclic, right? It is like someone riding a bicycle. So you keep pedaling, 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 pedaling until you get to your final destination. So that's what agile is all about, right? So I'm not just going to define agile as a framework or give a definition of agile. Um, I'm not more or, more or less giving definition, I'm more or less giving you the the accents of each of the topics that we are talking about. If you want to get that definition, I could direct you on places or resource materials that where you can get those information. For example, you can go to um, scrum.com or scrum.org or Agile, um, Scrum Alliance or PMI, which is Project Management Institute. But today I'm just going to break down you know, these key methodologies or these key concepts in such a way that it's going to make more sense. In Agile, instead of working on projects in a kind of a big bank, what that means is like wholly and entirely and delivering it to the clients, we cannot break those projects into smaller pieces or chunks. 
And then as soon as we start working on those projects, we ship to clients and then get feedback from the client, seeing if what the client has given to us is what really we are producing. So that's what I mean by iterative. What's what I mean by incremental level? But in Waterfall, there is that there is no room for breaking things now in such a way that we can ship the client at you know piece by piece. All right, so now I have on the slide, I have um, an, a picture that gives us a representative or a presentation about Agile and Waterfall. Don't, you know, get too overwhelmed about the picture. We're going to, I'm going to take time to explain it, but I'm just using that to explain to you in, in GFI, uh the distinction between Waterfall and Agile. So if you take a look at the first, the, the, the image that is on top, which has I mean, if you could really see those images or, uh, but I'm going to explain that. This is just, you know, to get us going. You have number one, number two, number three, four, and five, and which is like in a linear format, right? So it gives us an approach where number two cannot happen without number one happening. Number three cannot happen without number one and number two. Number four cannot happen. You know, you get the, you get what I mean. But, but the big, the image below, which is an agile approach, is see how cyclic it is in other words everything is moving in a cyclic format iterative nature you know uh after we ship to the clients they, you know um the mvp which is the minimum viable product uh, um, we now go back again and start like it's repetitive all right so now we're going to make an analogy using the image i have on the slide which is um a waterfall. Uh, if you've been to Niagara Falls, which is in Ontario province in Canada, so you can see how beautiful the waters slide or like go down the mountains. But one thing I want to draw our attention to that image, or if you've been to uh, the Niagara Falls, is as far as the water goes down, you know, or strips down the mountain, it doesn't really go back again. So it is down, it is down, it keeps moving, it keeps moving, it keeps moving, it keeps moving. That is about waterfall. Waterfall is about one step, the other. I mean, it keeps going. There is no opportunity for it to cycle back again to the East original point, right? So I'm using that to explain to you just to get your attention about waterfall, what it looks like. Uh, it doesn't mean that waterfall is, a, you know, very is is an is a bad approach or bad methodology in total, but it has its own merits, which we are going to you know, look at subsequently in the subsequent slide. But I'm just sending the image to draw your attention um, that as soon as the water or as soon as the project moves from one stage to the other, it doesn't go back again in waterfall. All right, so now we have another um, slide that gives us a kind of vivid image about what waterfall looks like. Uh, wonderful sequential approach to project development. So now you see requirements, design, implementation, testing, and maintenance. And then it looks like in a very, it, as if someone is taking up a stairs, right? So you know when you're taking up a stair, when you're taking up the stairs, you take the first stair, you take the second step. I mean, you keep climbing, you keep climbing, you keep climbing. You get what I mean? So that's what it looks like in Waterfall. In waterfall, it is descending. So the requirement, first of all, you have to gather the requirements, you have to design, you have to, you know, implementation, test, verify, and then you have to um, capture, and then you have to maintain if there is any defects. All right. So um, in the next slide, I'm going to explain to us what each of those um, steps or what each of those stages entails. All right, so what 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 happens at each stage, at each sequential phase? Uh, we have the requirement state, we have the designing, we have the implementation, we have the test or verification, and then we have the maintenance. So in other words, we have five studies or five major studies in waterfall. So what does that mean? The requirements is where um, we got our requirements, stakeholders, the clients, you know, project managers, they all sit together just to understand what the project is all about, right? Just to gather the requirements. And then, um, you know, like I said, meeting with the clients, meeting with the stakeholders, you know, and they document those requirements. Documentation happens at the requirement stage. After that stage is over, 
uh, then it enters into the designing. The designing is the brainstorming or the planning phase of the project, right? And, and then one thing again I need to point out at this point is in the requirement stage, it is the, you know the time that the client is mostly involved in the project. At the other or the other stages, the client is left behind, uh, which is I mean like I will explain later in the slide, which is another difference between agile and waterfall so the design stage is where the development team or what i would call the you know project managers and those who are involved in the project apart from the clients will begin to design more or less the developers and the project manager will begin to design the coding techniques or you know begin to brainstorm about the tools and the results that they're going to use to work on the projects after that stage is over, it enters into the implementation stage, which is what is called the execution phase of the project. This is where the actual coding or the actual development starts, right? Um, this is when the developers begin to implement those ideas, implementation, as, as the name entails. After that, you know, you have the testing, uh, which is also called verification stage. The testing is where the uh, quality assurance engineers, or uh, what you call QAs begin to verify for high quality uh, products for the clients. They begin to test. So no, make sure that whatever that we are shipping to the clients meets up to the you know to the standard or what is obtainable in the market. And after that, you know the product is um, shipped or made available to the market, which is the general availability. Right, the product is shipped, and people begin to use it. Then the maintenance is where if there is any defects for example you buy a product let's say hp products could be a laptop it could be a desktop and then um you discover that or oh, at some points your your computer crashes or dies so you now you know reports to the company and then they tell you okay bring it back to us so that we can verify and then you can be able to repay and give it back you know send it back to you again um so this is the point where any kind of box or errors are you know refactored and then you know refactored and making sure it doesn't happen again all right um now we're going to uh, make a shift from the waterfall to the agile and we wanted to use i wanted to use this image here to represent all this kind of shift okay so if you have any question if you have or um, concern please just put your question in the comments of these uh, of the channel and then I'll be able to respond to you or if you want to talk to me privately you feel free to email me or feel free my feel free to email me and then we can schedule a time or you can even visit my website at www.ineedscrummaster.com and then we can be able to arrange uh, a meeting for that um if you like so far what you heard or what you're seeing please like share and uh, subscribe to the channel or uh, you can even refer your friends and then let them also have the benefit of you know this opportunity okay so let's keep moving all right so what does the image here represent you see how those you know tiny humans or what those people are trying to do one person you know from one stage to the other um the one appears to be cutting or arranging a flower appears to be the flower the other person is kind of trimming that the other person is kind of watering it what those means is collaboration what those means is trying to cut piece by piece in order to you know arrive at the goal so that's what agile right incremental incremental you know piece by piece All right, so we have uh, I have a, also a image that represents uh, the agile. Uh, the, like again, again, this is another topic of its own where I can really break down what those image entails. But just to give us a high level explanation to what that image is, um, you see, you know, product owner, for example, the team, the scrum master, the product backlog. What this means in order to produce potential shippable increments each sprint or at the end of each iteration in agile environments it goes through a number of process right there are events that are involved there are people who work on those projects you know there are duration right so that's what that's what 
that little image there represents. So that, like again, don't get too overwhelmed. I would explain that in another topic of its own. Right, so like I earlier pointed out, it doesn't really mean that waterfall is bad in its own. It has its own strengths. It has its own weakness. It has its own pros and cons, right? So as uh, sort of software development lifecycle is consigned, waterfall has its own pros. What that means is it has its own strengths. What makes it um, appealing uh, in using it to build a project? It is. It has a clear structure, right? So you see when I was explaining the designing, the requirements, uh, implementation, maintenance, you know, it has a very clear cut out structure. It is easy to manage because of the clear structure and it can easily track progress. I mean, as far as team moves from one stage to the other, you can really you know, know what or what they are doing at each point, right? Very predictable and it, could, it mostly works in a very stable environment, um, which is against or in contrast to Agile. Agile works perfectly in an unpredictable environment. We don't really have every requirement, so that's Agile for you. Okay, so because of detailed or early planning, it saves time, cost, right? So because we already have everything ironed out, we are like, we can really figure out to greater percentage of how much it's gonna cost to work on, you know, on that project. We can really figure out the end product of or the end goal of the development or, or the end goal of the pro that we are working on and then what you see what you plan is what you get right w y p w y g so whatever you plan that's what you're going to get at the end of the projects all right as far as our waterfall also has its own strength it also has its own weakness right uh it has its own backside i would say all right, so waterfall really does not support change. Change is one big challenge for waterfall. Evaluation of new requirements after project process requirements. So as far as we have, what that means is when we have new requirements, we will have to go back, the team have to go back again and evaluate it from the beginning. So let's say in between the project, the client comes in and say, I want please put a new requirement or new functionality to this. What that means is, the team has to reevaluate and start afresh. Testing comes late at the end where the product has been built, which is different from Agile. Agile is test as you build, test as you build, right? There's no time, like we don't have to wait till the product has been totally built. Everything is being tested as the developers are building. Um, it doesn't really give us opportunity to capture feedback. Like I pointed out, the only time that the client knows or sees what is being built is doing the requirements when the client is involved. Apart from that, the client doesn't really um, say or tell whether what he or she gave the team is what they are really working on. There are lots of documentation. In other words, the team spends a lot of time documenting, right? Putting things down. Uh, I mean, documentation is nice, but most of the times in waterfall, teams spend a lot of time documenting, which which is not the end goal of you know working on every product or every project. Errors result in waste of money and time. Let's say uh, towards the maintainer or towards the uh, verification stage, there is an error. What happens? Everything is gone. Everything is gone. Money is gone. Time wasted. Team overwhelmed. That's it. That's one huge drawback in waterfall. OK, when is the best time to use waterfall? There are times when waterfall is the best approach. There are times when waterfall is not. It wouldn't fit in, right? Uh, just like it's not every project that requires Scrum. Scrum might not be the best fit for every project. That's another topic of its own, but I'm just trying to you know, give you a heads up on that. Um, some of the times when waterfall is best suited for a project include the following. One, um, any project that is well defined, I mean, you are, it has a clear cut requirement that we don't have to change anything. Use waterfall, right? Waterfall works in a very stable environment. As far as there's no change coming forth, use waterfall. As far as you have trained personnel and available resource, people who are going to work on that project, 
are highly, highly skilled. Waterfall is the best bet, right? As far as the team is familiar with the tool or familiar with the project, and the project is quite simple, Waterfall is the best bet, right? And Waterfall also, the final but not the least, it works in a very short time frame projects. You know, projects that are very long term, Waterfall is not based on experience and based on research. I've been working on, as, I've been working as a Scrum Master and Agile Coach for a long time now. Uh, in my experience, projects that takes more than, let's say, four months, six months, Waterfall might not really fit into that, right? Some projects uh, going into a year, a year plus, 16 months, 18 months, Waterfall might not be the best because it is not a very short term project. It's a very long term project. So it's, it might not be the best approach or best methodology to work on that project. Okay, so now making a transition to Agile. Um, it does appear that Agile also has its own strength as far as it has its own weakness. We're going to talk about the weakness of Agile, but for now, let's pay more attention to the strengths. Um, Agile, you know, one key strength of Agile is it acknowledges change. In the Agile manifesto, again, don't bother. Uh, we're gonna um, that's another topic of its own, uh, where I will be breaking down Agile manifesto, which is like uh, like a working document that um, developers use or Scrum team use in building projects. Okay. Agile welcomes and acknowledges the reality of change. Change is constant, especially in the contemporary period that we are in. Um, things are always changing. We can't really predict. So sometimes clients might change his or her requirements in between that. So Agile, you know, kind of captures that, makes it more stable. Okay. And in an Agile environment, the team can get feedback, especially when using Scrum, when doing what is called a sprint review you an opportunity where the developers or the scrum team can be able to um, show to the clients, stakeholders, what they have built for over two, two weeks or three weeks or even one week or at maximum of four weeks to capture feedback and then they're, they're going to listen if they are on course or they are off course. So it gives the opportunity to capture feedback. Okay, so errors are identified and fixed right away. You know, if you do remember what I said previously, um, in a waterfall environment, the only time uh, that errors could be fixed is late in the project. But in an agile environment, as far as those errors are identified, they are rightly fixed away. So there's no time to wait till, let's say, testing or the QA time. I mean, we, we do it as it comes by. It's an opportunity for communication. In you know, one of the 12 agile principles talks about first communication. Again, don't get bothered. I'm going to explain that in another video. So keep an eye for that uh, where I will explain in terms of communication. So the team have more opportunity to interact, communicate, discuss, just to understand, inspect and adapt on how they could be working on the projects, right? So, and then there is also the opportunity to manage progress, progress. The list kind of, for example, in Scrum gives opportunity for the team to know whether they're on course or off course. Or even though during the sprint re review, when they capture feedback from the clients, they will know if they are on course or if they're off course. Again, there is much more opportunity to prioritize in an agile environment than in Waterfall. OK, so as far as Agile has its own strengths, it does have its own weakness or drawbacks or the cons. Um, some of the weaknesses of, or some of the major weaknesses of Agile include just limited documentation. We want to ship working software to the clients. We don't too much pay attention to documenting, putting things down. That is one key, uh, one drawback about Agile. And then because of less structure, we don't have like the making like sequential approach to planning, right? The chances of off tracking might be high, right? Because I mean, we are inspecting adaptive, but we don't have like that detailed planning as there is in Waterfall. More time and commitment, so the team is kind of kind of more committed, 
you know, that's not about agile. The process is repetitive. Like I said, there is this cyclic nature of repeating the process. At the end of the sprint retrospective, the team goes back again and starts the process again. So that's another drawback. And then fragmented delivery of end product. What that means is we don't deliver to the client the big bang. We deliver to the clients incrementally piece by piece. There is poor resource planning, which you know costs money, time, and resource. All right. And the final slide or the final thing I wanted to point out today uh, is when is the best time to use Agile? Like again, Waterfall has its own best moments, the best moment to use Waterfall. And at the same time, there are moments where Agile best fits the project. So when is that moment? That's the question. Um, for ongoing projects, um, Agile is the best. What that means is, for projects that the duration is long term, so Agile is the best bet for that. Projects when certain details are not known from the aren't known from the onset. We are not sure about what a project entails in total. So Agile is the best time. And then it's best to take for projects that doesn't have clear constraints. By constraints, you know, things that might be drawing us back timeline available results agile is the best bet okay so i'm gonna stop here for today i hope you find these really high you know enlightening i i am more than happy to meet with you um to have a one-on-one -on -one section meanwhile i am always conducting a scrum class for both beginners and professionals and like I pointed out in my first video, if you haven't watched that video, please go back and watch the video where I kind of give an intro on what I'll be doing on this platform. So um, if you uh, need to Agile or you have heard about Agile, but you're not really sure, or you have heard about Scrum, but you're not really sure, or you want to become a Scrum Master, anybody can be a Scrum Master, anybody. That's another topic of its own. I'll be using this platform. Anybody can be a Scrum Master, whether you are a cybersecurity expert, whether you are a student, whether you are a manager, whether you are a PMO, project management officer, whatever your profession is, whether you are a developer, whether you are whatever it is, whether you are a pastor in a religious organization, whatever it is, whoever you are, you can be a Scrum Master, you can be an agile coach, an agile consultant. So um, take time to take a look at my website at www.ineedscrummaster.com or if you know of your friends or colleagues who might be interested about Scrum and Agile, please refer them to uh, www.ineedscrummaster.com and feel free to like, share and subscribe to my channel so that you can always get um, notification whenever I have a new release for my contents. So I'll be releasing twice every week, Mondays and Fridays. Uh, the time might vary, so because of the um, time difference, geographic good locations of people. Um, so just keep an eye on my channel, like, share, and subscribe. And then I would always be more than happy to, you know, share information about Scrum Agile with you. And then I'll be looking forward to seeing you again. Okay. So if you have any question, please don't fail to reach out. Either keep, you know, drop a comment for me and then I'll be able to get that or you can email me and then I can, you know, get back to you. My email is info at I need scrummaster.com. You can find that on my website or you can find that on this platform platform on my YouTube channel or you can even check out my um, Instagram page, LinkedIn page, the same. I need Scrum Master. That's what you know what you will see when you search either on the LinkedIn or on my Instagram or the Twitter. So I'll be using these ways to be able to communicate to us and share information. OK, I'll keep it at this point. Thank you again for the time and then I will see you again next time. All right. Have a wonderful evening. Bye for now.